At Zenni.com, our factory direct model means no middlemen or outrageous markups. Just the same quality frames and lens options as the other guys for one tenth the price. Zenni offers prescription glasses starting at $6.95, as well as affordable sunglasses, blue blockers, and more. The best part? Try any frame, anywhere, with our 3D virtual try on. Visit Zenni.com today and change the way you buy glasses forever. The one and only Shante Moore joining us from the West Coast, from Los Coast. Angeles, bright and early, her time. Yeah. I, had to, I had to move heaven and earth to make this happen because it is so early out <laughs> west. <laughs> but I, I do appreciate you it. Did. No. I, I do appreciate it because you know I'm, I'm a big fan of yours, so I, I appreciate Thank it. So, so let's talk about, uh, first thing I want to talk about, because we can't, uh, you know, move past what is going on in this, in this country right now with uh, yeah. everything, with what happened with George Floyd, Bri Bri Breonna Taylor, everything that's going on, social justice, racial inequality. Um, mm -hmm. uh, what, is this, what does all this mean to you? Well, all of it out there is a little bit disconnected in my home. Mm -hmm. However, with my son being 17 and driving, uh, that part brings it to the forefront of the everyday life. Um, making sure that he pays attention to how fast he's going on the freeway and what he's doing so that he is not pulled over. And if he's pulled over, to make sure that he just presses record and complies with everything that the officer says. So that part makes it very, um, very present in my moment to moment. In my data, in my weekly life, in my business life, what I've decided to do is a show on Instagram and Facebook just to connect to people because the unrest is there and I feel disconnected from the world and I, because I want to see people's faces and I can't see people while I'm doing the show, but I get to feel their connection by their texts and their, you know, the responses to what I'm saying and doing and singing. Uh, so that's what makes me feel more connected. Uh, I've done a march, and uh, but we have to be so careful out there, especially mm -hmm. with the COVID. It's not just the civil unrest. It's being careful so that you don't pass out right. <laughs> in the middle of that. So I'm just trying to just pick and choose my places where I can jump in and, and before it's time to vote, because that's what I'm going to do is vote. Right. And that's, yeah. a, that's a very important conversation that a lot, a lot of people are having. Um, a lot of people that I've talked to as well are asking questions about, you know, the conversations that we as African-Americans, as black people, mm -hmm. have to have with our kids when they get to be a certain age about going out into the world, how to deal uh -huh. with, with police, what to do and what, what not to do. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure you've had that. I've had that conversation with all of my children, uh, and, yeah. they're, and they're young. Um, I'm sure mm -hmm. you've had that conversation before now. Yes, absolutely. I always tell them, don't forget your black, honey. I love you. Have fun. <laughs> you know, the fun that other kids can have mm -hmm. if they start acting uh, goofy or a little ex more expressive than usual at a mall or anywhere. Um, it can turn out to be a completely different uh, outcome because our children have color on their skin. Uh, so I really do try to keep him aware of it and not in a heavy way. Mm -hmm. So I go, oh, don't forget, you're black. He goes, oh, you're just saying that because I'm black. I'm like, mm hmm and ugly. You know, I just try to make it a joke ahead of time. Right. Now it's really serious. Like, okay, seriously, babe, your job is to come home alive. Just be careful, careful. And no matter what happens, come back home to mama uh, alive. That's, right. that's your, don't try to be a hero today. Not today. Right, right. All right, uh, let's switch gears and, and talk about this, this pandemic because a lot of people have been at home, stuck at home. They haven't been able to run and do the other things that they normally do in a, in a yes. safe manner. And it's... In California, it's a lot different because you were open. No, well, you were closed at first. Then you were open, and now it's flaring back up, and now you're kind of closed again. So what have you been doing during all of this? What's the feel in California? Um, it's kind of eerie uh, when everything was shut down. I, I like to go out and eat by myself or just kind of be in a space at the park or something. It, was, it felt like it wasn't real life, like the Twilight Zone was what it felt like to me. Um, I find that being home is not strange for me because when I work, I'm gone and I travel and so then I come back home and then it's, you know, make sure I take care of myself and kind of settle. But now having, having the, the pandemic and the, and the quarantine part, it's just, it, it's a little odd. But it has brought us closer together as a fam as a family. We do more things together and try to stay in each other's presence a little bit more. And then 
when we feel like if anybody goes outside, we're like, okay, well, you stay over there. Let's play <laughs> ball. So throw me the ball over here, something <laughs> else. Um, but it's been good. It's been good because it's made us stay on our toes. It's it's brought us um, closer to the understanding that it could be the last day. And that's not a doom and gloom as much as appreciate the moment. My dad is 87 years old and he lives here with me. So, you know, I make sure he's okay and make sure he has food every day and that he's comfortable. And if he needs anything, um, I go out. And so it's, it's, it's just clearing up just little things that maybe would have been a little askew. Now it's all I, okay. I get it. We're right. supposed to take good care of each other right. even more. And you're and you're taking care of your family. You doing anything else? Uh, you 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 taking any? You, you doing any more extra cooking? You learned how to cook anything? I saw yes. you. I saw you on there. What were you cooking? Gumbo. I and, gumbo and, yes. Yeah. You, is that a is that a normal thing for you to cook? Gumbo? Is that is that it your is, thing? It is. It is. I love it. I love it. Crab is my favorite food. So that was my the week of my dad's birthday. So I made that for everybody, uh, my family, the three four of us that came together, for my dad's birthday. But um, yeah, I cook uh, quite a bit, and then so I was kind of happy that the restaurants opened for the last couple weeks. <laughs> Because I'm like, okay, I'm tired of me. I don't want my food this week. I don't want it. Um, but, you know, probably going to go back to that right now. Right. Um, but I don't mind. It, you know, he cooks sometimes, but I, I try to get him to relax and just chill and go take a walk or something and get out there, which he's like, I walked. I walked from the bedroom to my room, to the kitchen, and I'm done. I'm like, okay. That's it. That's it for today. He's, he's good that to go. That was it. He's good yeah. to go. I also, yeah. saw, I also saw you uh, doing a number of things on, on social media. In addition to, I, I see you cooking, and I see you doing some uh, some fancy eating. You also did a, a workout, and you did a, a, a thing called Sing, Talk, Love. <laughs> Repeat. <laughs> repeat <laughs> and then repeat yeah it's happening every sunday at three o'clock i uh i wanted to connect with people i i am a people person um i think all entertainers right now are kind of going a little bit stir crazy not being able to connect the way we're used to not being able to just go and look and smile and sing in in the faces of the fans it's just it's very odd very odd and uh you feel extra extra removed and i don't care for that as much so i decided to encourage myself as well as other people by getting on the camera every sunday at three o'clock uh six o'clock eastern and sing whatever i feel some of my music mostly uh mostly my music i guess but i've been doing gospel music and other people's songs and from Shade and anita baker it didn't it doesn't matter just talking about love and relationships and heartbreak and health and my regimen for my face and my skin people always go what are you doing what are you for your skin so i'm like okay how about i show you how to make up a movie okay let's show you that so just connecting i call it the more shantae show now i started out as ice cream sundays because i was eating ice cream that sunday <laughs> then i had to stop eating ice cream every sunday and go okay work out i think we should eat something lighter and uh that's some fruit and a workout how about that yeah so, so that and it's a good thing it's very very entertaining I also saw Thank in the you. last post that you uh, you put up, you were singing you were singing a variety of songs. One of them one of them was a gospel song. It, uh, yeah. it was a uh, and you had a, a Bible quote that you said that you had even before the pandemic. It was Isaiah fifty eight eleven. Uh, but yes, why it did was. you why did you decide to put that out there for the for the universe to to see you talking about that particular verse? And why was that well, one so you special? Well, you know, it's really who I am. Mm -hmm. I am a I am not just a church girl. I believe in Jesus. I do. I I am a believer, and I try to live my life according to those beliefs. And even more so before the pandemic, actually, which I'm really glad of that I didn't just start trying to find Jesus in the <laughs> middle of this. It would have been pretty scary. Um, for me, knowing what I know about who God is for me, that I had to really get it that there's more, it's more than just if you have money. It's more than just if you're alone. It's more than just if you uh, have friends around you and if you have family. It's about who you are on the inside. It's who you are in, at midnight and not with everybody calling. It's when you understand what your purpose is. And I have come to the place where I understand my purpose is to encourage people. And it's always been that in a sense where I sing and I hope that people feel, you know, you're not alone when you go through heartbreak and if you get, uh, you break up with your man or whatever it is, please don't feel like that's just selected for you because it, it happens to the best of us. So that's always been a part of it. But adding the element more of the spiritual depth of, who God has become to me, uh, even more so in my mature times. Not that I'm old, but I've definitely grown up quite a bit in the last few years having the ups and downs of emotion.